I've been a believer since my senior year of high school and from the time that I came to know Christ and submit my life to Him up until now, um, like any Christian, I've had some ups and downs, some bumps in the road, um, some seasons where I was obedient, some seasons where I was not obedient, and um, one of the seasons that um, happened a few years ago, actually the year before our first prayer and fasting here at Calvary, was a season of suffering for me. Um, I had just had my son the year before, and as a result of that, I was kind of plunged into a world of physical suffering, things that were happening that were just outside of my control. Um, I experienced some relational suffering with members of my family, extended family, and that was very difficult for me to walk through. It was a very confusing uh, situation. I also had some relational issues with uh, members of the body of Christ, and um, that was also very difficult for me. But I was also at the same time experiencing some consequences from sinful living that I just was not repenting of, I wasn't aware of to the full extent I needed to be. And so um, it was just a very hard year some things outside of my control, some within my control. And I just came to find that um, I was very hurt and confused and I was questioning whether or not I was a believer. Um, I wasn't trusting the Lord. I began to question whether or not He was really good, whether He really loved me. It was, um, I wouldn't compare it to a Job season because I didn't have any tragedies in the same sense that he did, but it was it was spiritually dark for me in that same sense. And so that that happened all the way, like the whole year leading up to the first prayer and fasting week here at Calvary. As I was going through that season, <clears throat> I again questioned whether or not I was a believer and I was just angry at God. and. So I decided that I was going to stop coming to church. I just couldn't face other believers. I, I wasn't trusting others and I couldn't face God mostly. I just, I didn't have the heart to worship Him. I, I, I imagined Him very angry at me, very distant, um, very much like a stern father who was disappointed in his child. And I just didn't have the, the heart to sit in service every week and, and experience that emotion in front of other people. So for a couple of months, a few months, I think actually I stopped going to church. And um, it was that was hard for me because I was hurt, but it was also hard for me because I didn't really have a support system at that time of people wondering what's going on or at least people reaching out to ask how they could help or what they could do to support me. I just don't think people knew what was happening and so that was that further made me frustrated and and angry at God and so I stayed away for a few months. During that time I thought that perhaps God um, was done with me and I found out that he wasn't. I still um, was going back to the Word. I just was a habit and I was still praising him in the car and wondering, well, I'm mad at God or maybe he doesn't love me. How am I still praising him? Um, I was I was still engaged in spiritual habits, but they didn't have the same meaning and weight as they did before. Um, so I knew God was still calling me back to him. I just didn't feel like going back, to be honest. And so I, um, as that year kind of wrapped up, I made the decision to go back to church. And as I did that, I remember hearing announcements about the prayer and fasting week. And I had been a Christian for a while, but I had never fasted before. I didn't know what that was about. And I was just like, well, it's another thing to do. And maybe God wants me there. Maybe he doesn't, um, but I'll go and check it out and see what's going on, so. As I came into that first evening where John was kind of announcing what the week was going to look like, I remember, um, I remember just feeling a peace. And I was confused about that peace because I expected to feel condemnation. I expected to feel guilt. 
Um, I expected to feel um, the anger of God against me, and instead I heard from John and the Spirit saying that there was an invitation and that God was calling me and others to come to Him and give our hearts and just to be open. And it was at that moment that I decided to put my defenses down and to finally hear from God what He had to say. And I wasn't disappointed. <laughs> um, that week held a lot of uh, treasured moments for me, a lot of um, a lot of moments where God was speaking to me hard truths, but also He was speaking gentle truths to me. He was reminding me of His love and His grace. He was reminding me that sin was bringing death into my life and relationships, and He needed to deal with that. And um, most importantly, He was reminding me that He still loved me. And I just, I, I heard that from Him, and I don't know who could hear that from God and not want to go back. And so my heart was softened, softened to Him, and I, I went back to the Lord. And I said, okay, God, I'm just willing to give you my heart. I'm willing to give you who I am, and I'm willing to let you um, do what you need to do to bring me back to you. So after that week, I heard from the Lord that he wanted me to pursue counseling, to receive healing and forgiveness and redemption from the things that I had been holding on to. Um, he was leading me to ministry and to serve him again in ways that I had stepped away from. And he was leading me to trust him again. He wasn't just leading me to trust him though, he was reminding me that he was still trustworthy. Because I think in my suffering and in my pain and even the confusion of my own sinful decisions, I had forgotten that God was still good and that he still loved me and that that he was trustworthy. And so I, I just remember since then, I've come to see that more clearly and I've come to trust him more for who he is. So if you're finding yourself in a season right now where you're doubting the trustworthiness of God, I would just encourage you that you're not alone. It is a normal Christian experience to suffer and it's a normal Christian experience to doubt God in our suffering. But I think I would encourage you and remind you that throughout the time that God has been in relationship with us, that He has given us examples from His Word, and there have been real examples in our own walks with Him where He has showed up and showed Himself trustworthy. So maybe sit down and read the Bible, read an example like of King David or Abram, where God showed up and was trustworthy even in their confusion and doubt or their sin or look back at your own life and even just grab onto one example where he has showed up for you in a real tangible way to show that he loves you and that he is trustworthy. My name is Kirsten and I've seen God's fingerprints in my life.